time management is about the decisions that you take on how to adjust your actions. Now, coming to the practical part of the talk. Practical pointers, how to build each one of these three skills. Number one, how to build awareness. You have to know a lot about yourself. And for that, you have to be very honest. And I want you to ask yourself these questions. At what time of the day are you most productive? At what point of the day are you thinking most clearly? In your entire day, what are the times where you will work or you will do stuff no matter what? And what are the times of your day where it is optional whether you want to work or not? How much time do you have in a day? How much time do you have in a week? When you do a project, do you always calculate how much time it will take and do you evaluate later that did you overestimate or underestimate? And finally, when you do something and it's not working out, how much more time do you put into it before you realize that I am actually wasting time and I'm taking time away from other projects? These are questions which are not always easy to ask, but it has to be asked. Because the thing is, especially in the modern world of capitalism and the way we are all wired now we try to we tend to think of ourselves as perfect working machines and we think that any up and down is a problem that needs to be sorted but that's not true we are biological human beings we have biological limitations so our attention goes up our attention goes down we need to time our work or our most productive or attention intense tasks to the times where our attention is maximum because otherwise we are swimming against the current and that makes no sense. So the time where you are the most productive might be different. So you have to be aware of your peak performance time. Okay, so this is how you build awareness. How to improve arrangement skills. The danger of arranging tasks is that there is a novelty bias. Anything new is more exciting. There is more dopamine. You are more uh, you have more you're more tempted to put them higher up in your priority list be very honest about how you are arranging your priority lists arrange your priority list way in advance before your limbic system has a say in it not all tasks are created equally and rather than making to-do lists you have to put priority lists so it's not enough to know a list of all the things you have to do you've also got to know what is the order or the importance in which you have to do them. Next to your priority lists, get into the habit of putting time budget. Get into the habit of trying to calculate that this task will take how much time. Initially, you might be way off. You might say half an hour and it might take you three days. But at least now you know. And finally, try and start outsourcing your arrangement. And this will take time. But try to build a relationship with somebody who knows what is the best sequence for you to do it in. And this is basically when you get into a position where you are a CEO or you're a founder, you have a you have a personal assistant who knows how to manage your time because now you are essentially outsourcing your prefrontal cortex work to somebody else. So now you can just follow orders and that is always easier. How to improve adaptation skills. Adaptation skills are extremely important because chaotic events keep happening and if every time a small wave comes in, your boat should not overturn. So the way to do this is to create anchors or habit stacking. So if you have one habit that is already in place, try to add another one and try to combine the two. So that habit one means habit two. So that will build your foundation of the whole day. Try to work in short bursts because you are maximizing your dopamine output and you are maximizing your attention the pomodoro technique if you've heard of it is exactly this you're working in short bursts of 20 minutes and you know that there is a break coming in 20 minutes 15 minutes 10 minutes 5 minutes so you know that and because there are regular alarms you are also entraining yourself to that sound so now your attention is much more hooked and you have more time. Set up reminders and reminders can also appeal to your emotion. Remind yourself what you have to do. Also remind yourself why. For example, you need to do this project. Why? Because you want to impress this one person who is in the audience. Whatever. Appeal to your emotional self. It will work much better because now you are basically trying to put your whole brain together instead of splitting it apart. You want to work with your whole brain. Make up backup plans. Suppose if this doesn't work, when are you going to do it instead? Having a backup plan also works as a motivation. 
because now you know that if you do this now your backup plan time is free and you can you can enjoy then last couple of points how environment affects the brain we are continuously being influenced by what is around us and who is around us so the people uh, the things the suggestions are all telling us how we should behave time management is very much people management and environment management because that in turn is attention management point number one declutter every one of you must have felt this at some point just cleaning out your table cleaning out your room makes you feel better and the more things there are the more stressed out you get because it means there are more decisions to be taken clean up your table make sure that you have if you have one project only that one project occupies your workspace this is a this is my current personal favorite way of managing time uh, you have to create zeitgebers it's a german word i'm not entirely sure what is a german way of pronouncing it it is external cues that will help your body's internal clock keep track of time so the original zeitgeber is the sun try to manage your time according to sunlight and you'll find that you have a lot more time uh, throughout the day wake up with the sun uh, try to wind down at night and figure out how you are dividing your day by noticing the sun as opposed to noticing only the clock social interactions for example i know people who will wake up at 7 a.m every day because they have to meet their friends at 7 30 for a tennis match that social interaction itself becomes a cue exercise could be a great uh, zeitgeber you are your body becomes attuned to swimming at that time or going to the gym at that time or going running at that time and then your entire day falls into place finally uh, what is the flow state the ideal flow state which is you are not thinking about time at the end of this whole discussion at the end of how to manage time the ideal situation is where you're not thinking of time at all because you are in that state of complete attention strong attention maximum use of time happening automatically all those distractions irrelevant tasks they are not stimulating your brain you are not thinking about yourself or how you feel about things your emotions there is a very clear sense of direction purpose control you're feeling good there's no fatigue some of us have been there it could be at a moment where you're reading something very engrossing or you are creating a poem or creating a song or you are listening to music or you are dancing and your full brain is involved in that that is a flow state that is ideal how do you reach that flow state is a whole other discussion uh, i'll give you a very brief 60 second idea of what is flow state when you are in flow state your default mode network goes down so you're not really thinking about yourself your dopamine is spiking and very very importantly your brain stem is involved so in your brain stem from your brain stem is released a hormone called norepinephrine it's also called as adrenaline or noradrenaline adrenaline is important for your excitement you want to feel excited if you're not excited you are bored if you are too excited you are anxious but in the middle between boredom and anxiety or frustration lies flow state which means when you do something you are your your brain has your brain has enough motivation to pay attention to it for a long time and you are neither falling down into boredom nor are you going up towards anxiety frustration so for me the this whole example of surfing is perfect because you are not overthinking it you're not underthinking it you are just in balance you're letting everything come at you you're letting the waves the wind everything come at you and you're not falling down so that idea of working in a flow state where everything you read is making sense and everything you are saying everything you are doing is in complete harmony that is what we are all aiming to achieve and meditation is actually one of the ways in which we can achieve flow state
to conclude uh, there are some take home points uh, time is perceived differently by every brain and every one it is a function of attention memory and emotion uh, time management is actually attention management your priority list is made by multiple parts of your brain and the less conflict there is between multiple parts of your brain the more easy it is for you to manage time because now nobody is pulling your attention to different things if your entire brain wants you to work you will work but if one part of your brain wants you to work and one part of your brain wants you to watch a movie there is a problem uh, awareness arrangement and adaptation are the three skills that you need the key to our awareness is honesty you have to arrange things slowly and you have to adapt fast you have to control the environment to control your body which is how you control time flow state remember the surfing metaphor and learning to manage time is a constant process because basically learning to manage time is learning to live that's essentially what it is time management is actually learning how to live learning what to do with the time you have on this earth so it's a constant process we keep getting better and better at it because we keep learning to live better and um, we have to be patient and kind to ourselves